Hi there. Hello again. Um, yes, how's this sounding? Can you hear me? Can you hear me in some form? What about you? Yes, still no audio. Well, maybe there is. Now there seems like there might be audio. Okay, yes, there is sound. All right, awesome. JJ? Where are, going? Where are people going to find this? That's the question. <laughs> we ended that last session. We started a new one. It's one of the vagaries, mysteries of the internet. But anyway, people seem to show up. There are about 80 people here so far. So you might need to just go back to the Sketchbook's cool homepage. Okay. Bring your computer over here if you wouldn't mind. Oh, people are on my my personal channel, not not the Sketchbook School channel. Oh, awesome. Mm. All right, guys. Are you seeing it? Yeah. All right, good. Sorry about that. It's been a really long time since that happened. Hopefully it won't happen ever again. Okay. Let's begin again. And let us... <laughs> First of all, I want to say, despite what just happened, that um, last week we, we celebrated Bastille Day by drawing Louis the Sixteenth, And it was awesome. And uh, I thought... Just seeing, I mean, there were close, to, I think there were over a hundred Louis that popped up in a procession. And I hope that one of them was yours. If not, I look forward to seeing whatever you're going to draw today. So, um, yes, good. Well, thank you. I see people are coming back. Some people say there's no audio. Some people say there's no, you know, as long as you don't say there's no, uh, no interest, nothing of interest to do. See, we're going to do something interesting. But, John Palmer said it's haunted. It's haunted, possibly. It could be, it could be the ghost of Marie Antoinette has come back and said, why didn't you draw me? Uh, but, I'm sorry, you drew your husband instead. It is, um, it is less hot here than it is in Phoenix, but it's humid. And I noticed today already that that I am um, sticking to the paper. I don't know if you've ever had that experience. Drawing, sticking to the paper. I am a little bit. Um, so that may occur when we start drawing. Today we're going to be drawing fire engines. Why are we drawing fire engines? I don't know. I just felt like it. I felt like drawing fire engines because I've been into drawing kind of complex um, machines recently. And I'll explain a bit about what, what that means. And you might say to yourself, I'm not six. I don't want to draw a fire engine. True. I understand that. But we're going to have fun doing it. It'll be an interesting experience. I think we'll learn a little bit about something, about drawing, possibly, maybe even about fire engines. Um, so let us um, begin the show. Let's begin the show. What do you say? It's now 9.13, which means we've kerfuffled and wasted time for too long. Let's talk about Hanamula. Today, we are sponsored by Hanabula, as we are every week here on Draw With Me. And what's particularly exciting is this, which is the Hanamula Zigzag. So if you've never had a zigzag book, it is a book that unfolds in one long piece of paper and then folds back up into a book. Pretty magical, right? Yeah. Um, so you can do drawings. Like here's a drawing I did a while ago. Um, so it's a drawing that you can go across not just two pages, but three pages, possibly dozens of pages. So, uh, would you like one? How many are we giving away? Five, right? Yeah, we're giving away five of these Hanamura zigzag books today. Um, if you'd like one, let us know. Let us know why would you like one. What, what's, what sounds interesting to you about it? And uh, we'll pick a bunch of people, pick five people and send them to them. So all you have to do is write to us at info at sketchbookschool.com with your plea for the zigzag. Um, include your U.S. mailing address. Fortunately, we cannot share these 
right now with non-US customers because we're sponsored by Hanamula USA. You can't spell Hanamula without USA. Well, you can Well, there's no S, but anyway. Anyway, let's move on to uh, Windsor & Newton, our other fantastic sponsor. And Han uh, this week, Windsor & Newton is going to be giving away a product I really love, which are these watercolor markers, Pro Marker watercolors. And they are uh, they're just beautiful markers. I'm going to be using them today so you'll see how they work. But they are essentially, they are like watercolors. They behave like watercolors, but they're also markers. And they don't bleed through your paper, which I also love. They have beautiful colors. So they are all um, also same deal. Write to us, tell us why you'd like them, and uh, include your mailing address. You'd be amazed how often people write to us, ask for um, us to send them one of these wonderful prizes, and then don't tell us where to send it. What are we supposed to do? Our mind reading department is um, has been downsized due to the impending recession. So you got to help us out. Tell us. Okay. Let us. Let's, I hope that the rest of this part works out because I've tried to do some technical things here. Okay. So this is a fire truck. I'll just get it away from my computer. This is a fire truck, and. Um, so this is a, it's actually a fire truck from New Jersey, I believe. And it is, it's a beautiful, it's a beautiful piece of machinery. It is large and in charge. It is red. So you're gonna need red, probably. You're gonna need black. Um, or you could just do this whole thing in whatever color you want to. You can choose any colors you want to make this. There are fire engines that are um, lime green. I've seen lime green ones. They're different colors. So um, you can pick whatever palette you want to. But as you can see, it's a pretty complicated thing. On one hand, it's kind of a truck, right? It's sort of like a you know, like an 18-wheeler maybe or an extended, I don't know. It's a big truck. But it's got all this stuff on it and compartments and cool things. So to draw it, though, um, and I'm drawing it on the zigzag, and the reason that I'm using the zigzag and then draw is because this is long and thin, and I decided that I want to focus on a long, thin, thin subject. Long, <laughs> All right. So the way that we approach this is by saying, let's measure the height. What's the height of this? And then we're going to measure the length. And you don't have to do it with inches. You can just simply take your, in this case, a brush, let's say. And you can say, all right, um, let's see if I can do it with this floating photograph here. But uh, I can take my photograph here. I can So I can measure with my brush, and I can say, OK, it is roughly that high. Right? From where my finger is to where the top of the brush is, roughly that high. And then I can take it, and I can say, all right, so the, if the one height length is at the beginning of that tire, roughly. Another height length is at the end of that section with all of the uh, gear in it. And then there's about half of a length at the back. So it's kind of two and a half times its height is its length, which is going to be relevant when we're laying it out on the paper. So I tried to do this. Let's see if this works. So here, OK. So here's three lines. So those lines represent roughly the, uh, the height divided into, so we have section one, section two, let me see here, we have section one, section two, and then section two and a half, all right? So when we put it out, when we get our paper, our zigzag or whatever reason we're going to draw, I have to make sure I can do it upside down, um, stretch it out, and then we're going to I don't have a sense of it. So I'm going to say, okay, this I'm going to do one panel, two panel, and then a bit of a third panel. And that's how I'm going to lay this whole thing out. So I now know that it is... It's These panels, by the way, of this paper are not squares. They are taller than they are wide. So I have to think about that. So I'm going to measure it again. I'm going to say, okay, this is the width of this paper, so I want to make it roughly this. Let me 
get grab something to make a mark with. And uh, here I'm gonna make a little little mark there, little mark there. So that's approximate, but that just sort of gives me an indication of okay. So this is one, two, and a and a bit here. You with me still? I'm still recovering from the uh, beginning of this session. But, all right, let me move to another uh, page, another section here. Can I do it? Will you allow me to? Um, let's see, I'm going to go here. Huh? Yeah, okay. So there it is. It's, no, it's a bit too small now. Um, let me see. Well, this. Yes. All right. Or even better, how about this? It's the same. It's just going to be one of those days. There it is. Ah. So, you know, just in case you're wondering, like, what is the deal with this? What is up with this guy? I normally have a high-tech studio with, with all kinds of accoutrements that allow me to do this much better than I'm doing it today. But we were up in the woods in a cabin, and I'm kind of makeshifting my way through this. So none of this is our regular gear, but it's, it's, it doesn't matter. We're, I'm among friends, I hope, right? So anyway, so I'm going to be using this Winsor Newton um, Pro Marker. What I like about it is it has two ends. It has a drawing end, and it has a kind of a brushy end. But because I'm drawing big, I want to feel loose and free, so I'm going to be working with this brush, I think. And I want to remember, just going back and having a look at that, um, I want to have a look at that where I divided it up into threes before. Remember that diagram? Where is it here? Yes. So you see, it's. I want to draw, on the first page, I want to kind of go up to that front of the wheel. So I just have to remember that part. I'm probably going to come back. I'm probably going to forget it. I have to come back here. But yes, so that is it. So now let's go back here. We have a nice big one. Is it that one? Where is it? Yes. Sorry. Here? No. Is it here? Yes. Okay. So now you've got a nice big drawing. Oh, by the way, um, I did upload the, this picture and the one that's divided into three to um, our blog on YouTube. So if you go to the community tab on YouTube, you can download this image yourself. If it's too small on your screen, if you're looking at it like on an iPad, if you're looking at it on your iPhone, if you're looking at it on your I Apple Watch, and it's really tiny, um, you're going to want to have a bit of space. So. All right, here we go. We're drawing. Stand back. So... I can still feel adrenaline and anxiety flowing through me. So, thank you for being patient. And uh, so this, we said, goes about up to... So that wheel is going to be... Did we say it was the front of the wheel? We did. We said it was the front of the wheel. Let me just measure it. Eyeball it again. Yeah, front of the wheel. So we need the front of the wheel is going to be about here. Can you see that? Let's see if I can get this even higher. Pardon me? There seem to be some issues with the reference. Well, I'll tell you what. If you're having an issue with that, too bad. Oh, you know what? Um, if you have an issue, it's because you, you've only looked at the preview. You have to click all the way through. You have to click on the actual picture, and then you'll see the whole picture. Okay? And if you can't, we'll deal with it later. Right now, I've got to draw. Got to draw. Sorry. Got to do a draw can't have any more technical problems. It's the height of this wheel, so the wheel is about up to here. I think that's more or less correct. Yeah, I'm feeling like trying a big, bold way today. 
At least I was. Now I'm feeling a little <laughs> less bold. I was, but it's okay. This too will pass. It was a mistake to try and draw this big on half of a screen. No, it wasn't. That's what I feel like doing. And, okay, so, here's my ring shield. And, it powers back here. And then it slopes down a bit. And we've got this window. And, Hey, it's kind of lining up. It's kind of lining up correctly. It's so good. And yeah, it's also another weird thing is when you're drawing big and your reference is small or smallish, that can be an interesting challenge too because you're having to kind of on the fly scale things up. But it's possible to do it. I'm just going to quickly measure again. So I've got the measurement here to the front of the wheel, and then I want to see, okay, so it's this section, I'm pointing at the photo right now, this section at the back is where I need to go with the rest of this page. So this section here, all the way back here is going to be that part of the truck. Okay. I will try and remember that. Now, you might say to yourself, this is really pretty complex. And um, it is. There's a lot of stuff on it. There's a lot of bits and components. But what we do is we want to just break them down and draw them one at a time. Draw one and draw the one next to it. So right now I'm going to draw, I'm drawing this little sort of uh, light array here on top. And... Uh, drawing this, whatever it is, this another kind of lighting thing that's sitting there on the top above the windshield. And then I'm going to very, I'm going to lightly indicate what I see through the window. I don't want to kind of go too nuts with that, but I want to uh, you know, have a sense of the stuff that you can see through the window, figure out how bold we want to make it later on. And then we have this kind of grill on the front. What does that go back to? It goes back to about the middle of that um, part there. So you gotta, you got to keep talking to yourself. Talk yourself through it. And just keep looking for things and seeing where they line up. Where does this fall compared to this other thing? Like here's this little horn down here below. And it lines up kind of where this part goes in. And then there's a bell here. Pretty cool. Nice chrome bell. And then there is this stick. I don't even know what it is. It's not an area, but it's something sticking up the front. And now we've got the bumper, which is arcing out. The bumper is kind of coming into the, where that wheel is. It's lining up with the bottom of the window. And then there's a couple of little doodads there. There's a circle here. There's another circle there. I, I like this brush for its flexibility. So I can, like draw big fat lines and I can draw kind of thin lines too because it's squishy and allows me to do different stuff here. And then we've got this thing here which has the big headlights in it and I presume there's some kind of grill over here. So yeah, kind of got most of the things here. Now what about this line? I think I'm going to put in this black line right now probably going to come back in and do some red later on, but I'm going to indicate that black line right away. There we go. And this door has this sort of emblem here. So I'm going to put that on. And then there's some other stuff here. There's, the, there's no, I kind of put it in the wrong place. <laughs> Just this is back window, okay. So this is the side window. And this is the little the window that that's small, but I made it too big. And then there's the window here that's big, but I've made it too small. Okay. 
there we go. It's just one of those days, I guess, where most things are going to go wrong. Like, for instance, here's a couple of handprints that came from having ink on the side of my hand. And then this, I, I've made a curve in, but it doesn't. It actually is like that. And then there's a line here, and there's that. Okay, so those are... And then there's um, sort of a light panel up here. There's some kind of a hinge deal here. And there's these couple of handles. And... Oh, and this, uh, the door here has... Has another handle. It's a handle, and then it has these letters. Which, boy, um, can I do these letters now on the fly? Yes, I can and I will. An E, an F, and a D. I think it's because it's from Elizabeth, New Jersey. Or did I just make that up? Let's see if I remember. That's where it came from. Okay, so now I'm gonna. I f I'm. I filled up basically two pages. So if this is a regular sketchbook, I would now run out of space, but um, fortunately, it's not. So now I have this back part, and I have these various bits of metal stuff. There's all kinds of metal things in here. There is uh, some kind of a step, and there's various tools. I don't, I don't feel like dealing with these tools right now, so I'm just going to skip it over. And um, put this thing down here, put this and this here, and there's various other things that are sticking out. I'm just kind of skipping over them, um, because we can come back in with a more detailed pen later on, maybe, and fix up some of these other things. And also these sm smudgy bits here that I got from the side of my hand, um, not a problem, because we'll cover them up. And then, look, this whole thing obviously has a bit of perspective to it, so we want to kind of take that into account. I don't want to get too crazy about it, though. Um, and then here's the two and a half. This is the half right here. So um, here we have this wheel, and the wheel is sort of oval. But then you can see the front of the wheel underneath the truck there. And then over here, underneath this part, you can see that back wheel. See the back wheel that's sort of hidden? It's, it's just peeking out back there. And here we have this sort of rail at the back. Here's the black lines. And the black lines are not quite continuing. See here? I have the black line down here. Here it's up here. Don't know. Don't care. It's all right. Because um, part of the nature of this kind of big, loose drawing is it's okay if things are a little bit wonky. I mean, they're always okay. It's always okay if they're a little bit wonky, but particularly with this style, because it's, um, you know, it feels approximate. That's a good, good excuse, but it's working. It's working for me, so I'm going to keep going with it. And here's this metal box. There's this strip back here. So there's some kind of a doodad sticking back up there. All right, so that's kind of more or less it. I've more or less got that whole truck figured out. Let's see if I go even higher. It's a, it's a big truck. I don't think I've ever drawn anything quite this large before. But so now we're going to go in and we're going to we're going to detail it up. We're going to detail, you know, detail the fire truck. So. Um, I need my markers. All right, so I happen to have this actually, all these beautiful chunky markers. And uh, let me just pick a bright red one and see how it works. Oh, that is nice and red. Very satisfying having this, you know, because it does look like watercolor. But of course, I don't really have to do the work of watercolor. I don't have to get out my palette and stuff. I can just grab this marker, and there it is. And you can mix them, by the way. 
should show you that sometime with these markers. You can you can mix mix them like in a palette, like you would a regular watercolor. You can just take a little bit of them and uh, mix it up. All right, so now I'm going to have to be a bit more serious about this. Now you notice there's these little kind of gold lines that are running around, which are really quite nice, but I didn't really take those into account. So I'll probably have to put them on top. I'll figure that out. Um, red. Yeah, this is a lot of red. But also, I, I, I'm going to think about this, but I may decide that I want to layer some stuff on top of this red. But I just don't want just the marker of just the watercolor, but I want to have um, kind of some other texture so that it isn't just flat. We'll see how it looks. I mean, if it looks nice being just flat color, then so be it. But we'll decide that as we progress. Being kind of loose, but, but you see how fast it is to cover? It's nothing like a big fat marker to really cover a big area like this. It's nice. You could do it with a, you could do it with a big fat brush and some watercolor, or some gouache. That would be another way of getting maximum coverage like this. And you see how it's um, blurring a little bit here, the black? This is the black and the red are mixing together. Because the black isn't an ink, isn't ink. It's not like a permanent marker like I would normally draw with. It is, a, it is watercolor. So of course, when you put some fresh wet watercolor on top, it behaves like watercolor, and it tends to, you know, blend. You can control that. I think if you let it dry, really fully dry, the lower level, then you would be you would be better off. So, um, let me find that that's what you want to do. But, so, yeah, it looks kind of like a kid's drawing with just this flat area, so I'm going to definitely come back in and zhuzh this up a bit. So, all right, um, I also want to maybe put in a darker red in here on the front. Just a bit. Just make it look a bit more dimensional. And there's a bit of shadow here. Probably not going to. Shouldn't bother with that. But yeah. And then, um, what about this bit in here? Maybe I'll use like a Payne's Gray in there. Paints gray is a really cool color because it's kind of blackish, but it's also bluish. And, uh, and I'm going to show you something cool in a second. Let me just get this first layer down. But now I'm going to take a wet brush. Where's my brush? Here. And I'm going to take it and I'm just going to take this wet brush and just, you see how the gray is coming across, and that is, makes it sort of more watercolor-like, right? I can do the same here, and a bit here, a bit here at the top. And then I can go in with this, with the marker itself, and just fill it in. But you have that little bit of a reflection up at the top, you know, that helps to establish that it's glass, sort of smoked glass, or whatever the term is. Makes it, uh, 
again, dimensional that it's reflecting. Um, all right, so what about these tires? I think I'll make them panes gray as well. So it's different than, I don't know if you can see it on the, this not very good camera, but um, it is, paints gray is different than black. It is less aggressive somehow, and um, therefore, this, this is a bit gentler. But I think this shadow underneath should be black. So, all right. Uh, oh, oh, this this part in here is black too. So I'm going to make this again paints gray, but I'm just going to do it a little bit light lighter, uh, not fill it in completely, and then go in with a brush and fill it in. And I might even use this brush here to just add a bit of sheen to the uh, front of the bumper. Kind of cool. And I could even just draw a circle in here to indicate this. You see how it's, it's not just feeling like um, a marker, it's feeling a sort of in-between world. Really like so. All right, now um, I'm just gonna just go in a few places. Now we've got to deal with this whole section in here, this whole area. So what I'm thinking maybe is I will draw it with a colored pencil. So I'm just gonna draw some of these things in here. I'm just gonna loosely indicate them. Oops, this is a midnight blue color pencil, so it's sort of, again, not super black, but it's, um, you know, it's, ooh, that happens to line up just perfectly with that smudge I made before. And here's this inside bit, and there's... Some other brightly colored bits in here, like the, the, there's this yellow thing, I'm not even sure what it is. And there's an orange, maybe some kind of clamps of some kind, I don't know. What mysterious cool stuff in here. But to me, they're just spots of color, really. And that's the main benefit there. Is that they're just spots of spots of color that are breaking this up. And now I'm gonna take this marker, uh, again, the Payne's gray one, and I'm going to take Payne's to fill it in. I'm just, gonna, I'm just slapping down some spots of it because then I'm going to take the watercolor brush and I'm going to turn this into watercolor. So it fills in this kind of black area, but it isn't so black that it silhouettes everything. So, and then, that's a bit more. That's another thing you can do, is you can do um, wet on wet, where you take, you wet the paper a bit, and then you go in with the marker, and it will kind of bleed the way that it would if it was regular watercolor. So. All right, and then uh, I'm also thinking that I'm going to take a colored pencil and I'm try to see what it looks like to layer it on top of this. I don't know if you can tell that, but it, it's just adding a bit of texture to the field of red that the watercolor is putting down. It's just, and so it's a red pencil on red watercolor. Um, it might seem sort of unnecessary because you've already made it red and it's basically the same color. That's another nice thing. So this is a red marker. Uh, this is a red pencil. And this is a cadmium red watercolor marker. So they're similar. What this hatching is doing is it's just making it a little bit more um, textured. It also has kind of a interesting effect of indicating speed, like speed lines almost, which is interesting. So I can do it back here and, you know, it makes the fire engine look like it's whizzing down the street or something.
and then what about this area? Maybe I need to. This is sort of like it's called. I think it's called diamond plate. So it is like um, chrome. Alex. What is it? Alex. I know. I know. Lindsay Newton actually is just coming out with metallic watercolors. So that would be cool to have there, which I don't have yet. They promised me them soon. Um, so yeah. So is there anywhere else that there's just just little indications like that just make it feel like you thought about it and it also is a nice juxtaposition so you have this big heavy lines that look like they were put down really quickly but then you augment the whole thing by putting in little just details and textures and then there's this whole little area is also textured And then I might even go in with this pencil and just do some other stuff in here, in this area, just to make it look a little less flat. Um, yeah, and then let's put in some more stuff in here. So we can just keep going over this over and over and adding more visual interest. And so you might have thought to yourself, I don't know if I'm going to be able to draw this accurately. But as you can see from my example, accuracy is not necessarily the only objective. And that in fact, you just want to make it engaging somehow. Because we're not doing a technical diagram of a fire engine here. We're just making something that looks cool to look at. And so that is our objective. And also we can say, you know what, I I uh, want to make up stuff that isn't really there. I wish I had a, some kind of a gold pen. Or some kind of an... Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. What do you know? Check this out. Let's see if it works. This is a gold gel pen I just happened to have brought with me. That is surprising. So it's... Um, yeah, that's kind of cool. Can't really see it as well as you can see the kind of goldish yellow one there, but you know, I can. Oh, it's English Town, New Jersey, not Elizabeth. But yeah, so I can put in all these just little things I'm writing in with the gold gel pen, just making it that much cooler. Pain's great. What about it? Pain's gray is it's a standard watercolor color. P a y n e s. Pain. I'm not sure who Pain was, but uh, it is it is essentially a bluish black. Um, that is a neutral gray that you can mix with lots of colors. It's a great way to add shadows because you can blend it with virtually anything and you get really nice shadows because it's, it's kind of a cool gray. What else do I have in this bag? I have a, I have a really opaque white pencil here. That, so here I screwed up and didn't make this chrome surround and I also didn't put in this highlight here now I can easily go back in and fix that up I love it's taken me a long time to find a really great opaque pencil um, there are not many people make them but this is a good one um, anything else? There. And even a little bit of a highlight up here to show the reflection. And we can even have a bit of a, a bit of a highlight in the window. Now I'm going crazy with this white pencil. Oh yeah, I originally got it because I wanted to draw this 
in there. So. Hmm. Yes. It's a white pencil. And. Good. Feeling pretty good about this. I don't know if you can see it. I may have to take away the reference and show you where I'm at with this whole thing. And uh, here. All right. Close it all up. Dropping things left, right, and center. But, so yeah, so here it is now. We've got it. And it expands onto the next page. I mean, it looks so nice and bright red, doesn't it? It's so cute. It's cute, right? But you see what I'm saying about how it has this big kind of chunky aspect to it, but it's also got all the details in it. So it's, it's nice that way. And then... It's a white pencil. Yeah, it's a Windsor & Newton. No, it is just a regular Windsor & Newton pencil. It's a Windsor & Newton design... Uh, I think they're called design line of um, regular regular pencil. There are watercolor pencils too, but this is not a watercolor pencil. It's just a regular pencil, but it's nice and opaque. And, uh, there's also, and this is the this is the watercolor pencil, right? Um, yeah, the, the watercolor pencil is also very. Um, Gray is like that. Yeah. yeah, this is the regular pencil, and it is, um, it's just very opaque, so I like it. Let's get rid of this guy. Yeah, I mean... The thing about watercolor pencil, about opaque, the opacity of a pencil, is it really does depend what you're, what you're working on. What are you trying to, you know, what is your underlying surface? That can vary. And secondly, um, you know, what, what the paper is like, what, whether you're drawing on top of watercolor, whether you're drawing on top of gouache, all those kinds of things change the, the the opacity, let's say, the robustness. There's some that are really creamy. I mean, you could have like a, like a, one of those grease pencils, you know, that come in different, like with a string. Those can be pretty overwhelming sometimes. And they're not truly artist material, so I don't even know what their um, light sensitivity is and that kind of thing. But one day we'll go into it in more detail. Okay. My blood pressure has, has subsided. I feel more normal again. And I think we can wrap it up. Is there anything that I need to talk about that I've forgotten? Um, I don't know. I hope that... If there are any Spark members out there, by the way, I'm looking forward to seeing you on Saturday. We're having our Chinese calligraphy workshop. So please do, do not forget to come to that. Um, and what else? Um... I had an essay, a video essay that came out this week that see, people seem to have quite liked, in which I tried to get people to commit to doing something for two years. And a surprising number of people pledged that they would. Watch it on this channel if you haven't had a chance to yet. Um, it is called A Radical Proposal. And it is a radical proposal, but I think it, it has the opportunity to, to make um, for people to have a lot of fun. Yes, um, I think we're done. So I just want to remind you of a few things. One is, I want to see your fire truck, fire engine. So please share it on on Facebook, on Instagram. Um, don't email it to me because I, it's overwhelming. So just share it on social media, but put hashtag SBS Draw with me on the post. 
and then we'll be able to find it. And if you remember the schoolyard, all the better. Um, just put it up there, and we will find it. And so, we'll, so next, I'm imagining next week we'll have like a huge procession of hundreds of fire trucks. That'll be really awesome. I can't wait to see it. Um, my essays, I mentioned the video essays, but I write an essay every week. I actually write two, but the one on Friday is free. And if you sign up for it, you also get this book that I wrote called Never Feel Guilty About Making Art and Other Essays. And um, it's free. All you need to do is put in your email address. You won't get any advertising or anything like that. You'll just get essays every Friday. And um, I don't know, how many do we have? Like 15 people now are getting them. So you could be one of them. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't already, because there are a lot of things that happen, you know, including screw-ups like the beginning of two. I don't even know. I don't even understand what happened today, because everything has been fine until one minute past 9 a.m., but it's done. Um, that's it. Have a great day, guys. Finish your fire engines, and I'll see you next Thursday when we draw together again. Thank you. And, uh, Thanks, by the way, to Windsor Newton and Anna Newton.